Hi, this video is the first part in a series about the Terra Protocol and ecosystem. In this video, I'll explain at a high level what the Terra Protocol is, its goal, and how it achieves one of its most important functions, which is maintaining the UST to USD peg. If you have no idea what that means, don't worry. I'll explain it with examples and hopefully in a way that's easy to understand. There are timestamps in the timeline below so that you can skip around if you need to. Let's get started. First off, what is the Terra Protocol? Everything in this video can be referenced back to the Terra Protocol's documentation and white paper. So from the documentation, I quote, The Terra Protocol is the leading decentralized and open source public blockchain protocol for algorithmic stablecoins. What does that mean though? Let's break it down. First, protocol just means a system of rules. Secondly, a decentralized and open source blockchain is just an unchangeable public ledger of transactions that isn't owned by a single entity. So that's like a bank's database of transactions and balances, except everyone can see everything and its truthfulness is not maintained by the bank, but by many parties. Also, the Terra network runs on a proof of stake blockchain similar to Ethereum 2.0, and it's powered by the Cosmos network, which is like an internet of blockchains. Finally, Terra serves to be a creator for algorithmic stablecoins. Algorithmic stablecoins are coins that try to maintain the same price as fiat currency, like the US dollar or the British pound, through a set of programmable rules. Some examples of Terra stablecoins are UST, KRT, and EUT. I'll get to how Terra stabilizes the stablecoins in a bit. Okay, so to sum it all up, the Terra protocol is a system of rules that runs on a blockchain to enable the use of stablecoins in a programmable way. So what is the point of the Terra protocol? Its first function is to make algorithmic stablecoins useful, and in doing so, onboard the general public to cryptocurrency. The second function for the protocol is to enable dApps to be built on top to provide even more utility to the ecosystem. I'll talk about the latter in a future video. Why are stablecoins even important? In order for people to transact, the volatility of a currency must be negligible. People that accept a currency must have confidence that the price of it won't drop in a week, and the people that purchase with a currency must have confidence that the price of it won't go up after they've used it. That's why people think in terms of US dollar or the Korean won. It's easy because their price is stable. This is also partially why it's difficult for merchants and regular people to transact with Bitcoin. The price is just too volatile. Stable coins will allow for people to transact with confidence in a decentralized crypto economy. Participating in that economy will empower them to remove the middlemen of traditional finance like banks, brokerages, and other financial institutions to truly own their own finances. This is one of the ultimate goals of crypto and of the Terra protocol. That brings us to the next question, which is how does the Terra protocol make stable coins that give people confidence? They do that by pegging them to existing fiat currencies like the US dollar. For the rest of this video, I'm going to use UST as an example, but the idea can be extrapolated to any other stable coin. UST is the Terra stable coin that tracks the price of one US dollar. The protocol tries to maintain the one to one ratio between UST and USD. The way it does this is by using the Luna token. It's important to understand a bit of background on the Luna token before understanding how it helps to stabilize UST. Luna is the native staking and governance token of the Terra network. You can think of this as ETH is to Ethereum network, Binance Coin is to Binance Smart Chain, and AVAX is to the Avalanche network. People can stake and lock up their Luna to receive rewards from the network's transaction fees. For example, I can lock up 100 Luna tokens and receive currently about 8% APR, which amounts to about 8 Luna per year. Luna can also be used to affect governance on the protocol. If I own Luna, I can vote on certain proposals that affect change on the network. An example of this is like the recent proposal of the protocol when people voted to remove a tax on stablecoin transactions. Those are now free. It's important to note that the value of Luna is proportional to the value people see in the Terra ecosystem. The more useful dApps there are on Terra, the more transaction volume there is, the more people stake Luna, the more money flows into the ecosystem. All these things add to the value of Luna and push the price up. These are kind of like the fundamental aspects of the Luna token. But there are also market forces that affect the price of Luna. There are people trying to manipulate the price. There are borrowing and lending forces at work that may drop the price during liquidations. There may even be general crypto market sentiment that causes money to flow in or out of the Terra ecosystem. All these things can affect the price of Luna positively or negatively. Finally, it's time to answer how the Luna token helps maintain UST's peg to USD. It's a common misconception to think that Luna is collateral to UST and that every $1 worth of UST is backed by $1 worth of Luna. That is not true. The best way to think about this is just the way Terra's documentation describes it. Imagine the whole Terra economy as two pools, one for the supply of UST, the Terra USD stablecoin, and one for the supply of Luna. 
Just as a bit of context, in economics, as the supply of an asset increases with everything else fixed, its price will drop. Similarly, as the demand of an asset increases with everything else fixed, its price will go up. The inverses are also true. When there is increased demand for UST, people are moving money into Terra ecosystem and UST's usage is increasing. This drives the price up and one UST is worth more than $1. To bring this price of UST back down, the protocol incentivizes users to burn Luna by shrinking the Luna pool and minting UST, therefore making the UST pool bigger. An increasing supply of UST drives the price of UST down. Similarly, when the demand for UST is low, maybe people are selling during a bear market or money is flowing out of the Terra ecosystem because of bearish sentiment. This drives the price of UST down, and UST is worth less than $1. In this scenario, the protocol would do the opposite and incentivize users to burn UST and mint Luna. This reduces the supply of UST and eventually will bring the price back up to $1. When I first heard this, I was like, yeah, okay, sure, but that doesn't answer why users would do that. This price stabilization is achieved through something called arbitrage, which is profiting from price differences between markets in as close to a risk-free profit situation as you can get. The incentive that is the crux of this whole thing is this rule. Users can always trade $1 worth of Luna for one UST, and they can also always trade one UST for $1 worth of Luna. This is stated very specifically in the documentation and the white paper. The importance of this rule and how it contributes to pegging UST can be best explained by an example. Let's take for example the scenario in which one UST is worth $1.10. UST is now over the peg. As a Terra user, I would buy $100 worth of Luna with my money, then immediately swap it to 100 UST. With my 100 UST, I will then sell it to get 110 US dollars. I had $100 at the start of this transaction and ended up with $110, profiting $10. This is great for me as I just made a 10% profit with one transaction, pretty much risk-free. I don't care what happens behind the scenes. I just care that I made some money. But what lies behind the scenes is what is important to holding the UST peg. When I traded my Luna for UST, the protocol earned the Luna and minted new UST. This increases the supply of UST and with a larger supply, the price of UST comes down, which is what the protocol wanted to maintain the one-to-one -one ratio between UST and USD. At the same time, as the protocol receives some Luna back, it burns it and reduces the supply of Luna, pushing up its price. Essentially, when someone trades Luna for UST or buys UST with fiat, it is adding to the Terra economy. Let's look at the scenario when one UST is worth 90 cents. Now, UST is under the peg. As a Terra user, I would buy $90 worth of UST, giving me 100 UST. I would take the 100 UST to TerraSwap and trade it for $100 worth of Luna, and then immediately sell the Luna to profit $10. I had to buy UST so that there is increased demand which pushes the prices up. This helps in moving the UST price back in the right direction. Behind the scenes, the protocol received the UST that I bought and burned it, therefore also reducing the supply of UST. This also helps push the price of UST back up. As for the Luna, it minted new Luna to give to me. This increases the supply of Luna and pushes the price of Luna down. In this scenario, Luna's price is pushed down because the supply of Luna is increased. Isn't this bad for the Terra protocol? Wouldn't at some point the peg mechanism not work if Luna's price falls too low? The answer to this is theoretically no. As long as Luna has some value, then the peg mechanism should work as intended. That's because arbitrage will always work as long as the incentive rule is maintained. And the incentive rule doesn't care what the price of Luna is, just as long as Luna is worth something. So that brings us to the value of Luna. What would keep the value of Luna from being worthless? Like I said before, long term, the value of Luna is proportional to the usefulness of the Terra ecosystem. Just like Ethereum's price is derived from the useful applications built on it, the same thing is true about Luna's price. Theoretically, as the ecosystem grows and there's more transaction volume, Luna's value should continue to rise. Some apps that are already providing a lot of value to users are apps like Anchor Protocol, which is a savings account for UST, and Mirror Protocol, which is a marketplace for synthetic assets. Terra's pegging mechanism was tested in May of 2021, when there was a bear sentiment on Luna and other factors that caused mass selling of UST. There was an extended period of time where UST was significantly below the peg at around 95 cents per UST. This caused more bear sentiment, leading to more selling of UST. 
The issue here was that there was a $20 million cap on how much Luna and UST can be burned and minted in a single day. Why there's a cap to begin with is beyond the scope of this video, but this cap hindered the burning of UST and restricted the buying of UST, which messed with the arbitrage mechanism that maintains the peg. This cap has been since upgraded and the whole pegging mechanism has been working great since that incident. So that's an overview of what the Terra Protocol is and how it achieves its goal by maintaining its stablecoins peg to fiat currency. Let me know what you think and if there's any questions in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button so that I know to make more and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, stay safe, stay safe, and thanks for watching.